This episode is brought to you by Leo Bato and Associates, ang realtor na pato. This episode is brought to you by Dr. Lourdes Capulong. Our relationship with our parents has always shocked people when we tell them, and it's because our parents have never really treated us like children or like we were their children, so to speak. Um, their ex- it's not like they had no expectations of us, right? You know, expectations exist like in the form of you have to do well in school, you know, you have to try it, what it is uh, you aspire to be, but more in the sense that they never babied us intellectually. Uh, oh that's nice when it w- when it came to dinner table conversations if the conversation was i remember when the recession hit you know i was because this is 2007 2008 i was barely what year was i born i'm barely eight <laughs> nine years old <laughs> i'm barely i'm barely eight nine years old and having to ask them you know what's the recession and them not shying away from it it's like they explained it they explained what banks were doing and how that came down and you know, being able to chip in in whatever way a child can in the sense that, you know, you ask questions like, is that allowed? Um, As opposed to, you know, is this legal? And obviously that framework grows. But you ask questions like that. And they were never afraid to use the terms and the knowledge the way it was meant to be used in the quote unquote adult world. Right. Um, And so when dinner table conversations happen, uh, everyone kind of has an equal say in what that matter is intellectually. Mm. And then Obviously, it gets trumped experientially by whatever our parents have lived through. You know, that's nice, though. No? <laughs> it gets trumped experientially. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's wow. So experience really, well, experience and intellect supersedes pure intellect. I think so. I think the one interesting thing about growing up young and with access to so much information. Don't we all grow up young? <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a really good point. I was I born at a very young age too, you know. <laughs> That's true. Okay, go, go, go. Growing up. I think, I think growing up in the, in the age of the internet, okay. should I say, um, okay. in the digital age, and growing up with access to so much information yeah. means that young people now tend to come out of their formative years, whether that's like 13, 14, 15, 16, um, very opinionated, and in a good way. It's like these, these kids are reading... Um, material and substantiating all their facts, all their arguments with facts. On the internet. Yeah, on the internet. Stuff that's available to them, stuff that is backed by people who have done a lifetime of You know how much, how much work I had to do and how much, <laughs> how much rewriting I had to do when my kids were growing up with the internet? Before it was easy for my parents to say, don't do that because this is what's going to happen if you do that. <laughs> and all we had to do was believe it, right? Yeah. I tried that on my kids. They're looking at me, you know, we're going to fact check you, dad, right? <laughs> all the time. All the time. And, you know, my parents and I butt heads a little bit over the years over this. Because it's like... Share stories. I want to hear that. Oh, specific examples? I'm, I mean, it could be as something as simple as, you know, my dad and I both watch basketball together. Ooh! Um, and so it's... I hope you guys are on the same team, No. Yeah, we are. We are. We're oh, both. Yeah, we're yeah. both huge right now. Lakers fans. Oh, so um, I'm so sorry for your loss. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not in a good. They're not in a good spot right I now, know. are they? <laughs> yeah. As of this um, taping, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay, go. So yeah. you, you, okay, sports fan, so, you your dad. Yeah, it's as simple as you know. Um, you're having classic basketball discussions of players in different eras, you know, their impact on the game and what they do, and it's as simple as uh, looking up. You know, how many points did he have in this final series? And it's, you look at things like field goal percentages, you look at points, and that information, you know, you'd have to dig up a newspaper for that, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Yes. And now it's like, you look that up, and there's a website that hosts that information. Yes. And it's so easily accessible that, um, you know, anytime you're in an argument with someone, it's there, and you decide that that fast. And that, in a way... I know, right? <laughs> the speed of information, like unlike before, you had to get the sports almanac, buy it in national bookstore, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and then hope that it's in date. Uh, it's oh updated. yeah, oh my god. Um, and so you grow up with this sense of entitlement to information and a style of argumentation that really lends itself to you know pacing. Um, and I think you begin to disagree with other generations because of that. Whereas you know you have people that are. 40, 50, 60, 
uh, that have, you know, let's say a career in entertainment, you know, you have a career hosting a podcast. And so you could be, you know, all high and mighty and say, you know, did you know most podcasts see an increase in viewership if they do X? And it's like, you may have 20 years of podcast experience. It's like, well, we tried that and it didn't work. And so even if the data is available and it's there and young people are pointing you and trying to direct you mm. in a fashion that yeah. might seem like is what they know, um, experience still matters. And at dinner table conversations, when you're having uh, that sort of discussion, it's always remember to take into account that, you know, your parents as old and as grumpy as you think they are, um, they're old and grumpy with a lifetime of wrongdoings yes. and mistakes and learning yes. experiences that they are really trying their best to impart on you.